This is an introduction to the trans resistance amplifier and what it does is it takes a current input and it transforms it into a, a voltage output. And the reason it gets its name, if we think of transfer function naming, where you have an output divided by input, if we have a voltage on the output divided by a current on the input, V over I equals R, and hence we get trans resistance. And it has some kind of gain associated with it, so we usually say that the V over I equals K, and now we'll look into you know, why the circuit's used. So in our situation, we're going to use it to amplify our photodiode. So this is a photodiode right here. When light shines on the photodiode, it will produce a current, and the current will flow You know, if the circuit's completed through the device. And the current is very proportional to the light intensity. It's a very linear device over a wide range of light. So we could measure the voltage drop across here with no current flowing, kind of like an open circuit voltage, but it's not as linear as the current. So it's really best to use this as a current output type of device. We could model it as a Norton source where the you know photons strike the device, it produces a current, and if we look at it, this is kind of the open circuit right there where the two leads are the two leads on the uh, on the device. You know, if we measure the voltage across here, because no current's flowing out, voltage will build up across the Norton resistance. So ideally, we want to measure the current when the input or the outputs are short circuited. That way we're not losing any of our efficiency through that Norton resistance. In other words, all the current's gonna flow through this piece of wire right here because the resistance is zero where this is non-zero. So as long as this is resistance is zero, this resistor almost disappears from the circuit. And a good current amplifier will look like a short circuit. And we'd connect our inputs there and you know, inside a good current amplifier, it'll look like a short circuit, and there'd be some magical device in there that's measuring the current, multiplying it, and then producing by some kind of constant and producing an output. So how does this work with an op amp? So we're putting our single supply op amps in here. You know, it could be almost anything. We, we use the MCP6002 two-channel op amp. Feedback resistor going from V out to the inverting input non-inverting input is connected to ground. And now we could analyze the circuit really quick and get a good idea of how it's working. So we know that if our output is within our power supply bounds, if this is a zero to five volt power supply, as long as this output is somewhere in that range, we have our negative feedback, things are working properly, the voltage on the two inputs should be the same. And here we're fixing the voltage on the non-inverting input to be zero volts. Therefore, the output's going to do whatever it can to maintain zero volts on the inverting input. And then if we connect our Norton source there, this connects to ground, you could see that we have zero volts across the two terminals. And they call this a virtual ground. It's not an actual ground. There's no metal-to-metal -metal connection between these two wires. But it's a virtual ground because the op amp is going to do its best to maintain the voltage here at zero by changing the output. So the other part of the analysis right here is, you know, we can do some KCL to figure out what the gain is or the transfer characteristic of this circuit. We know in an ideal op amp, no currents flowing into or out of the inputs, and this amplifier is very close to ideal for the currents that we're working with and the resistances, so we could neglect anything that is flowing there. So any current flowing out of the LED or the photodiode is going to go through this resistor right here. And if we look at the current orientation of currents going this way, that means that the voltage drop is going to, orientation is going to be like that. So it's going to be more positive on that side, more negative on this side. And we know that the input voltage and the voltage on this side of the resistor is fixed at zero volts as long as this thing's in the linear region. So what that means is we could easily calculate the voltage V out right here because it's going to be you know the voltage potential across here really the negative voltage potential because we have zero connected to the to the positive side of the resistor voltage drop so if we have the in going into this node the in also needs to go through the resistor right there and then the voltage drops just going to be that in times the resistance 
and really it's going to be negated because of the orientation here. So we have in times r equals minus v out. And we could rearrange that a little bit so that we'd have minus r equals v out over i n. And there we have our gain equation for the trans resistance amplifier. So I built one of these trans resistance amplifiers on my breadboard. It's on this amplifier channel right here. It's a jumble of wires, but you can see I have my photodiode right here, and that's connected to my inverting input and to the, uh, to the non-inverting input. Then we have a feedback resistor right here, and I have an oscilloscope probe that is going to my oscilloscope over here, and I could see the voltage on the output of my trans resistance amplifier. So it's approximately 2.3 volts, I could see right there, you know, on one volt per division. So that's zero, one, two, and a third division, so that's about two and one thirds of a volt, 2.33-ish volts. And when I touch the device, you can get that huge sinusoid wave there. That's actually not light, that's my finger acting as a big electromagnetic antenna and causing all kinds of, what we call like 60 hertz and electrical noise into the circuit because it's very sensitive. But if I shine my desk lamp on there, you could see two things are happening. The voltage is dropping on the oscilloscope, and it's also picking up a little bit of a sinusoidal nature. And the voltage drop is, you know, the, the DC or the constant component of the light, and the the uh, sine wave on there is actually the uh, the light is flickering, like the light turns on and off so many times per second because it's an electronic LED light, and the photodiode is fast enough to pick that up, so it's showing up as a AC waveform superimposed onto the uh, onto the DC waveform, and the reason it's going negative is because our trans resistance amplifier has that negative sign in the equation right there, so you could see that you know our current's going in. And if we flip this up here, so I in times negative R equals V out, so the voltage is going to go down for an increase in current or increase in light intensity, and it actually does. There's a small but important detail we didn't cover in the last two videos about this amplifier. It won't actually work. Right? If our two inputs are at zero and the output's at zero with no current coming in, then as soon as we got a positive current here, it's going to want to drive V out below zero volts, which is impossible because the op amp minimum is zero. So what we could do is we could flip around the current source and have current going out in this direction. And then as the current, you know, as the magnitude of the current increased, the voltage would increase as well. So, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually use our rail splitter circuit. And we built one in some of the earlier labs where instead of referencing the non-inverting input to zero, we're going to connect it to one half of our power supply voltage, which is really 2.5 volts. And when we do that, if no current's coming in, instead of everybody being at zero there, they're all going to be at 2.5. The voltage here is going to be at 2.5. So now, if our current was flowing in the positive direction into the amplifier, when the current here increases, the voltage on the output is going to decrease below 2.5 volts. And how we could handle this is if we were going into something like a microcontroller, we'd call 2.5 volts to zero, and then you know, we would literally subtract 2.5 volts off of the measured output. And if you recall, the rail splitter circuit, which you probably still have in your breadboard, it's literally just a non-inverting op-amp follower. Right, it's called a voltage follower because the output voltage equals the input voltage or you have a voltage divider going to ground from your 5 volts. If these two resistors are equal, the voltage at this node is going to be you know, 5 halves, right, because it's going to be 1 half of 5 volts and that's what we're going to have here, which is 2.5 volts. So we know on our Arduinos we don't actually get 5 volts, it's usually 4.8 so this might be like 2.4 or 2.2. That doesn't really matter. The important thing is that we're at half the voltage in the middle.